Welcome to the Guitar Omni Podcast. I'm Carl Woolwind of Columbus Classical Guitar. Each episode, we'll chat with a featured guest from the classical guitar world. Candid conversations, unique experiences, and career observations from the people who best know the guitar. This is your master class in life and the guitar. For more information and past episodes, please visit ColumbusClassicalGuitar.com or see Carl Woolwind Guitarist on Facebook. So we've got something new and exciting happening here on the Guitar on Money podcast. For the first time, I have two guests at once, and we are spanning the globe. I have uh, the composer and guitarist Lou Valentine Johnson, who's coming to us from California, and... Uh, Alexander Sapok, who's a guitarist in Poland. This is fun and exciting. Lou, how are you? I'm doing fine. Thank you, Carl. And you? Thanks for being with us. I'm, I'm well. And Alexander, how are you? Thank you. I'm very well. Thank you. And you guys were telling me before we started recording that you guys actually, this is the first time you've actually spoken together in real time as well. Exactly. Which I think is, yeah, we- that's, that's very, very exciting. We've had this collaboration for, I don't know, I guess it goes back when we first met in 2016. We didn't meet. We communicated by internet, uh, email. Uh, you know, there were a lot of things uh, going back, but we've never seen each other either, other than in photographs and uh, never communicated other than in emails and text. But so here we are on your show. And tell, tell me about the Solstice Project. So it's pretty, pretty in-depth stuff that's going on here. It is. Alexandra, would you like to go first? Oh, yes. For me, um, okay. So for me, Solstice is a super um, important project in my life because it's the first piece I have uh, someone written for me. So someone dedicated to me and Lou was really um, you know, nice and he really wanted to, to do it. And I was super happy about this. And especially that we could next to co- uh, make some collaboration and to make this video in such a way that we have now. So it's, uh, it's really, I'm really proud of this, of this project. Fantastic. And how, how did you, how did you guys come to uh, be, be associated with one, one another to, to start the project? How did that happen? Well, our internet meeting, I think, um, initiated uh, maybe 2016. I uh, have a son named Alex who, uh, who died in 2010. And I started a, uh, a uh, scholarship in his memory. Oh, okay. He, he played guitar. He played some classical guitar and he liked okay. folk and blues. Anyway, we had this scholarship and uh, we had a lot of applicants and uh, Alexandra wrote a letter and said, I would really like to apply for this. What do I do? So we sent her this stuff and uh, mm-hmm. we got at the end of the year, we got all the information back in from our contestants and it was all video. Okay. You had to audition video. You had certain pieces you had to play. I think back then it was a piece concerto uh, that I'd written in memory of my son. And uh, Alexandra played that. And we had a, a, uh, a jury of, uh, of course, myself. We had a, a cellist and we had a violinist. And then we had a person who was not a musician. And Oh, great. Yeah. So I love that, that idea. That was our board, <laughs> our yeah. jury, our evaluation. Well, I, I'm very happy to say, and it's clear that uh, Alexandra played fantastic. She played beautiful interpretation. And so she was the winner in 2016. And I think if you go to her YouTube channel, you'll see some of her performances there of the Peace Concerto of Portraits and Song of Peace and the Question. And then in 2017, she uh, she was the winner again. So that's how our uh, that's how our association began. That but then there was a, a lapse in between where we were just in touch periodically. Okay. And is that, is this an annual competition that you have? You know, it is, it was, but I haven't had time to keep it going. I mean, it's still there. I guess I need someone to, uh, to pick up the ball and go with it. I'm so busy. I, I, I haven't even been able to put things, put the things out there for young musicians to apply. 
Okay. And Alexander, when, when you first applied for the scholarship in, in 2016, what were you doing at the time? How did, how did you find out about it? And, and uh, mm -hmm. how did that yes, all happen for you? I remember this day uh, very clearly because um, I was in my student house where I was living when I was uh, at my university. And I was just looking for some competitions. <clears throat> And I found this one uh, by Louise and I was like, okay, it's a great project, especially to me because I really like contemporary modern music. And I was like, okay, I want to try it. And uh, it's uh, one funny story about this, um, this competition because Louise doesn't know about this too. Uh, I, it was a very possible that I won't take part in this because no one really wanted to help me to transfer my fee to the to the states and i was like in four okay. or five offices in poland in um of western union and everyone told me no 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 I, you can't send it and i was like come on why <laughs> but finally i found one woman who could help me so everything uh, you know uh, was good then <laughs> Excellent. Great. Where were you studying at the time? Uh, I was studying at um, Chopin, Frederick Chopin Music University. In okay. Warsaw. Yes. I have Great. finished there my bachelor and my master's. Excellent. And are you still living in Warsaw now? Yes, I'm still in Warsaw, okay. but I have already finished my studies. Right. Yeah. Great. Very cool. So, so the, the, the Solstice Project came, it wasn't part of the, 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 the competition. It came came about as a result of you having met and done the collaboration for the, the competition. And then after that, did you did you ask him to write it for you? Or did, did Lou, you say, hey, I, I want to write this piece for you? How did that all happen? How did that? Well, it was like when I recorded a few other his pieces, I was, uh, we were just talking very often. And I just asked once if he has something new, maybe something, you know, special. Okay. And then Louis told me that maybe he can and write something especially to me and i really like this idea <laughs> and when was this when when did you write the piece um it was louis about around uh, two, um, two years ago okay i think yeah and but, lou tell, tell us about the work how, how how long is it what uh, how many movements what's the idea behind it that kind of thing well, the piece is called Solstice, and it works uh, through the seasons. And uh, I think we had this idea of, uh, I, I'm, I'm hopping back to my uh, association with uh, Alexandra, when she inquired about, uh, do I have any new pieces I had written? And I thought, well, here's an opportunity for a new piece. I'll write a piece for her. And Fantastic. So she uh, she seemed to like that idea, and so I wrote the piece. It's actually kind of a uh, I, I don't want to associate it with uh, completely with uh, COVID, but it was a good time to write it because everything was closed down. Nobody could do anything. No one went any place. So it was pretty much the same for me. I would sit at my desk and uh, and work on music. You know, they have a thing about uh, a, a cartoon I saw once where it showed a composer before COVID and then it showed a person from the back sitting at a desk with a pencil in their hand and then it showed another uh, photograph of a composer during and after or during COVID and it was exactly the same picture so <laughs> it, was, it was not that big of a problem for me anyway I started the piece it is uh, to to answer your question it is uh, three movements okay uh, the first one is called summer the next one is called shadows from the north and the third one is called winter uh, in all it's about 14 minutes long Okay. And if you want substantial, to, yes, it, well, it was definitely substantial for me. And then yeah. when I saw Alexandra's <laughs> video, uh, when I saw her play it, uh, it became even more substantial. And you can see her uh, performance. She's recorded the whole thing in a video on her YouTube channel and also okay. on mine. Uh, so okay, it's all and those, those those are easy to find if we, if we go to YouTube and, yeah. and look for either Lou Lou Johnson or Alexander Sapak, we can find those. Yeah, 
Very, very cool. And so I, I, I've, I've, I've watched the videos. I've listened to it. It's wonderful playing, fantastic music. Love it. Is, is the work being published? The work is published, yes. It's, okay. Uh, who's, who's publishing it? Well, I have it under a uh, Bill Salmas. Okay. Yeah. That's my, I just kept all my own stuff. I have over a few hundred works and they're all sure. self-published. So they're great. Right. Great. Great. Yeah. And is that easy to find if, if, if we, if we want to find that? Oh, sure. I think if you just put solstice <laughs> in, if you put, uh, Alexandra Sepak and you put, uh, uh, Get classical guitar. Uh, you're going to find you're going to find it on the internet. Google does a very good job of keeping track of everything. Great. And you said do you sell it through your website, Lou? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Great. Fantastic. So, and you know, you mentioned you know being this is kind of being your uh, your COVID project. Do you how much of that do you think kind of filtered into the composition, or your your thoughts about it, or or those kinds of things, or would you, would you have written it any differently if if it had been a different time, or was there some reflection that took place because of this the turning of the seasons, a little bit more time to pay attention to these things, um, any of that going on, or did, did uh, was it just uh, you, you you were able to be left alone because nobody was bothering you? <laughs> Well, regarding the effects of COVID on this composition, absolutely zero. <laughs> you know, I'm happy to hear that. <laughs> COVID Something has, was unaffected. Yeah, no influence of COVID whatsoever. I only, okay. I only mentioned that because it's if you took a timeline, you know, uh, COVID was there. And Alexandra and I were here with the piece too. It <laughs> okay. just happened to be there, and merely it, coincidental. It pushed it off to the <laughs> side. It just happened to be a uh, chronological uh, anomaly. <laughs> sure. So, Alexandra, did you find that uh, COVID gave you more time to practice? <laughs> oh, it's a very difficult question because <laughs> maybe it's more time for practicing, but. Uh, the way of your work of classes of giving classes it was uh, very difficult sometimes so of course it's better in meaning of time maybe but i prefer it in the normal situation right right so you were doing a lot of teaching online then yes yes a lot yeah yes. I'm, yeah it's tough yeah it's, <laughs> it's tough. very, very it's difficult very tough, so. yes <laughs> it's better it's better so, to meet you know face to face classes are okay right and um, so during during the process of writing the piece, were you sending drafts to her to check them out or anything, or did you just send her a, a complete work? How did that How did that work? Was it, <laughs> how much do we want to reveal? Oh, <laughs> go go go! Tell me, tell tell it all. Tell everything. Well, I'll leave uh, Jerry Springer's name out. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know it was. It was a wonderful collaboration, and it still is because we have all these memories of how we put this together. There, there's so many different aspects to it. I would write. Uh, there wasn't much collaboration. I would okay. say because what I would do is I would write the piece. I would send it to Alexandra. Maybe first movement. Okay. Okay. And uh, then she would send something back. Maybe playing it or talking about it and i would after i saw what what her ideas were then of course i would change it and i would come up with new ideas which were different ones than what she had and right. then we would put that together and then when we got to the point of the video make sure you ask me about the video at some point and alexandra too because the video is a whole another life story in and of itself that, that she did and uh so then when we got to the point of, uh, I don't know if it was sound files or the videos, I would look at uh, and listen and see Alexandra play it. And I would think, oh, wow, she does so beautifully here. And she does so wonderful there. And then I would get more ideas and I would, you know, I, I know that she's a very fast learner and she's an excellent player or interpretation and her execution. I can't say enough good things about it. Please don't blush too much, Alexander, because it's all, it's all true. 
<laughs> we're not we're not recording the video. It's just an audio podcast. So you can blush as much as you want. Nobody will see it. Okay. It's wonderful to have that permission from the host. Um, so it got even more interesting because once we started doing the video, then I'm I'm critiquing myself and I'm saying, oh, why why didn't you do this, Lou? Or why didn't you do that? <laughs> and so then I would write a coda on or something, or I would change a whole passage and I would send it to Alexandra and I would say something like, I'm really sorry. <laughs> 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 because, you know, to audience members uh, or people that look or listen to our music, they think, oh, we just play the guitar. They, they have so much right. fun. That's all they do. And that's, there's not sure. that much to it. And I love watching their fingers move and their emotions. <laughs> but we know, uh, I knew, that when I send that uh, new coda or that new section, I, I would think, oh, that's so beautiful right in there. I need to shake it up a little bit. Or that's so beautiful in there. I need to keep more beauty going. So let me let me take it out of a major key and, and let me not modulate to that strange thing I got into. So I would do this, I would change it. And I have, you know, I have fabulous people that work with me who do the notation and boom, I would have it done and it would look beautiful, but it would be totally different. I'd send it to Alexandra and with a, I'm sorry, but and we know, you know, Carl is a guitarist, yeah. and Alexander is a very dedicated, um, talented, hardworking person. She puts in her time. Um, I used to be that way, you know, so I can. <laughs> <laughs> but I know that she had to unlearn what she had just done and recorded and gotten used to and had it appear in her mind. Right. And so. She gets a uh, email from me, and I, I, she's always very gracious. I don't think she ever told me her real, true feelings. But yeah. <laughs> well, Alexander, now's your time. If you, you, time. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell him exactly how you felt about it. So, I, I, I wonder though, um, is do you just look at that as part of the process? Though, I mean, I, to to me, you know, it's a different thing when you're when you're approaching music that's actually written for you or written by a, a living breathing person than it is you know learning repertoire that's you know mm -hmm. more of the canon i suppose so i mean do you look at that as something that is it a positive thing just that you look at it it's creative it's part of the process something that you like or is it something that you say oh no he's sending me another draft <laughs> like <laughs> well um i really like this co cooperation we had because um I think Louis felt exactly where I'm not fully comfortable with this piece. And uh, ah. even though I didn't have to tell him that, oh, this bar, maybe, maybe we can fix something. But he saw it when I uh, sent him a recording. And I didn't really have to tell him what is, what is not maybe the best option. He just knew this when he got my recording. And it was great. I really like this. And I think uh, this kind of cooperation, it's, uh, yes, it's like a process. I didn't really expect that Luis will send me the final version and it's the last version and we can't do anything, um, anything more with it. No, I really expected that it will, will be like it was. Uh, Excellent. Yeah, cool. And it, how long, like this collaboration, like from when you sent the first draft, Lou, to the point where that center you were making the video, how, how much time are we talking about here? What kind of time span? Well, maybe a year. Okay. I'm guessing. And back and forth during that, that whole year. Yeah, because Alexander was busy with things. Uh, I got busy with things. So we would do, I, I had real time problems. So I would sit down and do something, uh, send it to her. And then by the, by the time maybe we talked about it again, I would have to look it up again and say, now, what did I do and why did I do this? <laughs> what, what was the point? And then Alexander would remind me, uh, you know, so we, uh, you know, I, I sent her things. Uh, I, I sent her, I would send her a piece. For example, I don't think we went through very many changes in the first movement. Did we, Alexandra? Mm, I don't think so. It, it was just some details. And then the second movement, uh, which is uh, Shadows from the North, is 
it, it just starts out dark and emotional and rich and complicated. Like uh-huh. the shadows are coming, you know, we have in the video, you can see the shadows coming through the trees and Alexandra is playing in the, in the forest practically. And that went together pretty well uh, without a lot of collaboration uh, because she just played it and, and it, it carried its feeling from the beginning to the end, in my opinion. And then when we got to the third movement, I think that is where, uh, where we had probably the most collaborative aspects occurring between the two of us, Alexandra and myself, because it was supposed to be, and it is a, it's a finale. And I kept wanting to have more of this and more of that and more excitement or more, uh, more, more of everything. Okay. <laughs> that was the piece. like a like a proper finale. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and and I was never really satisfied uh, with some aspects of it. So I would uh, commiserate and collaborate with uh, Alexandra about certain sections. I ended up writing a, a new sections for it. We changed things. That was the that was the piece, the third movement, winter, that had the most uh, back and forth between the two of us and i take uh, responsibility for for it dragging out the project because i kept <laughs> uh, you know i would hear her beautiful playing and i would think um she's doing fantastic and i can do better than that I, i'm not better <laughs> than her not better than her playing but sure, i wanted sure. to have the music be more and yeah i think we got that i think we got that that well, didn't it, it, i mean easy. that's the third movement that's 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 a very cool i mean they to have that response to like i i need to write better music for this person to play because she plays so wonderfully i mean that's that's a great response as a composer i mean i I think i've been i've been involved in projects where i mean i'm not going to say they've all been this way but the vast majority of them when i've collaborated with composers um it's it's been you know the composer says this is what i wrote and you should play it <laughs> you know <laughs> and that's fine i mean i like i mean i think i've i've always kind of assumed that's kind of how it goes um but what a what a cool thing that is i mean to have that back and forth and also to be doing this from half a world away from one another via email and whatnot i mean that's uh that's pretty exciting too i mean that that's something that's you know 50 years ago wouldn't have been possible right so Exactly. And, you know, the other thing about it is that here we are with you in uh, you're in Columbus, Ohio. Yeah. Yes, I am. Yeah. Here we are with you. I mean, yeah. we have Alexandra coming to the meeting from Warsaw. I'm in Northern California. And here we are with you. It's it's it's, after, it's crazy. It's, after yeah. all this and it's, happened. And it, and it seems so simple. And, and you know, the, the technology to do this has actually existed for a little while. And, and I don't know about you guys, but, uh, you know, I never got on Zoom before last year. That was, I, I didn't, you know, it's, it's been around for 10 years. And I know, like, so what is this Zoom thing? What is, you know, and now, you, I mean, over the past year, the hours and hours and hours that I've spent on it and, the, you know, doing the podcast and everything, it's uh it's it's amazing. It's changed changed the world, and I think maybe and I, maybe there's a, a pandemic silver lining there. I don't know, but uh, it's pretty 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 cool. I think I think it's it's yeah. So, um, so you mentioned the video. <laughs> we should talk about that. <laughs> so, and it's it's I've I've seen it, and there's you know it's, it's it's pretty conceptual, right? You know, it's not just sitting and playing and and having some some music and whatnot. Um, so. It, Talk about the production of the video and, and how all that came about and whose idea was what and, and that kind of thing. So where, where did you shoot the video, Alexandra? Oh, it was at my, at my flat. <laughs> okay. <laughs> With all noises, uh, what my neighbors uh, did you know, during this time. <laughs> or other dogs outside or yep. some other things. <laughs> And did you just shoot it yourself? Did you did you get any special equipment for it? Did you do it on, on your computer, on a phone, or? Well, I did it by myself, everything, but I have a <laughs> professional microphone and uh-huh. camera is from my mobile. Yeah, so okay. one microphone and one camera. 
two cameras. Excellent. Mm. Okay. All right. And you, did you do all the editing yourself too? Uh, no, this uh, this thing uh, is in hands of Louise. <laughs> <laughs> So what's, what's the story there? Well, are you asking me to give you a story? Yes, I, <laughs> yes, I think so. <laughs> okay, brace yourself. I'm braced. All right. So uh, let me back up a moment or two. I, I think one of the things that Alexander asked me uh, when we got into working on the composition together was did I have any other pieces so naturalized and, uh, uh, a few hundred of them and <laughs> she, she picked one uh, out that I know of and she said you know there's one of your pieces that keeps coming up all the time and it's because my mother loves it uh. <laughs> and it was uh, a little piece about three minutes long called Valentine Waltz and uh so Alexandra recorded it in her, I don't know if she was home in, uh, do you say it, Rybek? Rybnik. Again? Uh, Rybnik. <laughs> okay. <laughs> or, I'm not going to try to say that. <laughs> oh, I, will let, I think Alexandra should say that. You know, she asked me about, <laughs> I, I'm concerned about my English. Well, look at her. <laughs> Fabulous. We should be oh more concerned about yeah. you and me trying to, you and myself trying to speak anything. I, 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 think, I think your English oh. is just fine. <laughs> uh, English, but if we had to speak uh, Polish, uh, I think it would be a catastrophe. So mm, no, we don't want to ruin the guitar mania show with, <laughs> with our Polish. But thank you for uh, being so good with your English and forget all those concerns, Alexander. So, anyway, we had this little piece that uh, she played and she said, I'll, I'll send you a video of it. So she recorded it and she sent a video. And at that time I had a, I had an album with uh, string quartet and guitar of my compositions that had just come out. And I had sent it to uh, guitar player magazine, uh, I think a few months before. Anyway, so we get this video from Alexander playing this lovely lilting little piece so gorgeously. Uh, maybe in her kitchen and for her mother, I don't know, but uh, oh, fantastic! It, uh, and I thought it was so, so, so lovely. And I sent it to Guitar Player Magazine, and what they did is they it came out. I think within a few weeks, it must have been ready to go. They said, "Look at uh, our our video of the week pick is Alexandra Sekar." Playing, oh, fantastic. Yeah, playing uh, Valentine Waltz and uh, a review of uh, Lou Johnson's uh, uh, CD with string quartet called Peace. So what happened there was Alexandra got uh, a lot of uh, views right away. We get several thousand views of her playing this Excellent. little piece. And, you know, it kind of gave us a thought about video i don't know if, i don't know that we discussed it but uh <laughs> there's now do you want me to get to the story <laughs> i'm yeah, i'm ready i'm ready okay. so so we started talking about doing some videos and um uh, and then i think solstice came along and then alexander was sending me videos of sections that she would play and i remember that she had some complaints she said, well, every time I play, the light is not quite right, or there's, <laughs> there's, a, uh, there's a thermostat switch or a light switch in, the, in there, or a refrigerator comes on. Yeah. Or, uh, and yeah, the plane so flies cool. over. So then she yeah. put these beautiful plants uh, by her, and uh, if you want to look at her YouTube, you'll see uh, Alexandra playing ukulele. She plays ukulele fabulously and <laughs> teaches it. And she has like a, looks like Hawaiian plants next to her. So she's she has a flair for decoration, and uh, that's evident in her her videos. But what we did was she she was recording uh, sections of solstice, I think, and uh, uh, sending them to me. And she was always. Uh, complaining i don't mean that she's a complainer what she is is she's very 
um, she evaluates very critically. And uh, that's what she was doing. So I was talking with my video guy and he said, you know what? I could rip off 40 feet of green screen and send it to her. And she can hang <laughs> that up on her wall. And we can put her any place she needs to be, any time. Fantastic. So, so before I even told Alexandra that, uh, I get an email. We had not even discussed this at all. It says a little bit about the, the com communicative aspects that we seem to have together. But I get an email from her, and it has a link, and it has a... Uh, a green screen that you can buy for she says i can buy this for 125 dollars i can have it by tuesday and you know we and i thought i love this woman's motivation <laughs> this is a new great one. minds think alike right <laughs> yeah so i wrote her back and i said absolutely yes try it and so she did and we get the green screen and uh I take it into my studio. This is how our video ended up uh, being made. Uh, it's a wonderful video of Alexander playing Solstice. And um, I would take it to my video guy and he would say, well, we need to, we need to iron the green screen a little bit. There are a lot of wrinkles in it. <laughs> you know? And we need, to, we need to move that left hand upper corner out of the way because there's some funny paint or something that's showing that really contrasts and I won't be able to get rid of that. So these are just some of the little minor oh my details, gosh. you know, that we had to, yeah. and we smoothed all that out. And, uh, right. you know, uh, then what happened was we, we started getting the performance. Uh, Alexander started getting the performance the way she wanted it. We were pretty much happy with everything she sent, but, then she would say, oh, I have double notes here, or I have a little bug <laughs> here, or they, and we're looking there at the, at the uh, rough video and saying, okay, we'll fix this, we'll fix that, we'll fix those things, we'll get rid of that uh, string that's sticking out of the head of the guitar. <laughs> we'll, uh, you know, these are things that everyone who does videos, go, they go through, I'm sure. But what happened was, we could take... Uh, this green screen that Alexander would send with we transfer, I think, we'd have it, boom, as soon as she did it, she would say, well, I can't do, I won't be recording uh, tomorrow or the next day because uh, it's really hot here and I have to have my windows open and there's a school next door and it can <laughs> make a lot of noise. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there are, there are always these practical concerns, right? You know, yeah. and, and the other the other thing that crosses my mind, and, and Alexander, maybe maybe you discovered this too. You know, back when I was a student, and and you know, training and practicing and, and thinking about my career and whatnot, I never knew that I was going to have to become an expert at things like video editing and ironing green screens and thinking about. You know, it's like I just wanted to play guitar. You know, <laughs> and, and it's 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 interesting these days um you know i'm i i i'd venture to say that i'm i'm quite a bit older than you and it's it's interesting because the way that people have to build career now is so much different from what it was when I was younger, you know, and, and I, I have a tough time with it because I'm old and, and adjusting and trying to learn all these things is, is not as easy as it might have been when I was half my age now. But I just, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's probably different for younger people um, because that's the world that you know and live in. But, but still part of that, um, you know, wow, like... I'm, I, I have to iron my green screen today. You know, <laughs> that's not on my to-do list, right? You know? <laughs> yes, if you want to make a good video, you have to learn a lot of things. It's not yeah. only playing the guitar. Yeah, it's it, it, there's so much that goes into it. It makes you want to, like, gee, I wish I could just practice, right? <laughs> <laughs> so did, when, did you do... Um, all of the audio and the video together, or did you did you overdub the audio onto the video? Um, no, no, it was uh, at the same time the video all together. And, yeah. Yes, yes. Then that makes that makes things even more complicated, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it does. But Alexandra is yeah. uh, she's pretty hip, you know. Yeah. Uh, the uh, video the film guy that uh, I work with, uh, Robbie Spencer, the SE Studios, said. Uh, 
Uh, let's ask Alexandra what she has, what she's using, the microphones, the uh, what kind of video camera. And uh, when she wrote back, he said, oh, yeah, I know that. I know that. I know that. She's, she, got, she has good stuff. She's using ex excellent, excellent equipment. So that made it a lot better. I think what uh, you used an iPhone uh, for video and you used uh, some other, uh, a couple, another microphone in addition to the iPhone. <laughs> So, so for, for, for us audio geeks, uh, Alexander, what did, what did you use for the audio? What mics and interfaces and things like oh, that? Oh, it's a microphone called Rode. Or, 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 okay. or, yeah, maybe you know it's a very uh -huh. popular one. And the uh, interface Focusrite Scarlett. Excellent. Yes, I have. I have one of those. My, actually, I have. I, I have a rotor microphone. I don't know if it's the same one, but uh, it's 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 fantastic. It's great. Did you did you just record mono or is this it's a stereo microphone? Uh, it's just one, so it has to be mono. <laughs> oh my gosh! Okay. Well, it sounds great. Yeah. We changed it to stereo, though. We have. Two oh, I think it's uh, it sounds better because many people worked on this. <laughs> it's not okay. only you know my recording. <laughs> So, you, Lou, you have a, a, a person that, that did the editing for you on, on that, with the, both audio and video then? Yes, I have, a, I have people that I've worked, I have a few people I work with, but two uh, that are just fabulous. Um, one is uh, Richard Altenbach, he's a composer, and uh, we go back several years now. I never have to worry about anything. He, he hears everything perfectly, and that means you have to take your imperfections and make them perfect. With Alexander, there was hardly any imperfection. You know, it was just a, she complained about two notes where there should have been one. <laughs> yeah, that double note thing, it, it was the, uh, our, the longest problem. So it's why Louis. Uh, He's talking about this so many times about this double note because I always send him message. Louis, there are two twenty double note. <laughs> it's at two twelve in movement one. How did it okay. get back in there again? You know. <laughs> You've been outed. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's 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 funny. It's it, it's you, you know this. I'm sure you both know this. You know, the part of that process is you have to get to a point where okay, you just say it's done. You know, there there are things that I could do, but it's done. You know, and if there's a deadline of any kind coming up, that kind of thing, you just, it's it's this is, is is it good enough to go out kind of thing? Because you, and I've done this. I've worked with people who never finish a project because they're constantly pushing little things around. It's like, oh, I want to fix this. Oh, I want to fix this. I want to fix this. And at some point in time, I personally, I have to just kind of step away and say, you know, I could fix this, but I'm not going to because I want it to, you know, they always, always think of, you know, painters talk about like how many, like that, that last brush stroke that just, you got to get it perfect. That last one and walk away. It's done. Any, any more paint on the canvas is not going to make it any better. <laughs> We didn't seem to have that problem. We knew when it was done because of uh, her musicianship. And after that, it was only maybe we fix uh, those two little notes at 212 in movement one. <laughs> you know, I keep bringing that up because somehow on the videos, Alexander and I decided, well, we'll release it on my YouTube channel with all three. And then... Okay. After that will uh, we'll have our video editor split the the whole piece, the whole fourteen minute piece, into the separate movements, and we give those to Alexandra, and then she could release those. And um, so, when we did the the full uh, piece, we had it just the way we wanted it. We're we're pretty happy with it. We're very happy with it, actually. But, you know, I always want to give Alexandra an out if she wants to, you know, fix anything. We're, we're here. <laughs> we love you and we're here. <laughs> uh, so, oh, that's another thing, too. You know, my video, one of my videographer guys, uh, has he's a heavy metal rocker. And we would be in the studio and Alexandra sent these videos. All these guys, they're wearing black. They're like, I don't know, they're six foot four tall and they've got very white skin and they've got their, I mean, it's just how they live. We would have Alexandra on the screen. We'd be 
going through it, the band would be coming in from another studio and they would walk, they would all stop. We have this crowd of guys watching her play uh, <laughs> Summer. And it comes to the end where it's just a, um, a flurry of broken arpeggiated notes. It just falls down and then it's got a big chord at the end. And they would just watch her play. Nobody would leave. They'd walk by, they would look, they would stop. And so she has a whole fan club of heavy metal rockers. Oh, that's fantastic. Please tell me you got a picture of this or a video or something. Oh my gosh, that's fantastic. That's so cool. You have to fan club. <laughs> very good, very good. And will, you, will there be any uh, an audio recording or are you making a, a CD or anything like that? Is there are plans afoot for anything of that nature? I don't know, Alexandra, you're the musician. Well, I, I was actually about to to start some recording sessions for albums, but then COVID appeared and my studio was closed. <laughs> and, uh, right. and everything, you know, just got worse after it. So for now, I really would like to record the whole album of Louis' music, and I hope it will happen. But uh, it somehow it is late in time a bit. But maybe you know, maybe when the situation will be a bit more normal, maybe then. I hope. Sure. Yeah. Well, I think I hope we're heading in that direction. I, <laughs> I think we are. Maybe. <laughs> so, we hope. Yes. So great. Excellent. And do you do you have any other recordings available, Alexandra? Well, I have uh, only recordings on my YouTube channel. Okay. Uh, I don't have a CD. I hope right. I will have in my future, but for now I don't have it. Yeah, great. And so, so is, is, is the CD of Lou's music going to be the, the first one for you? I would, I, I would love to, yes. Oh, that's great. That <laughs> is very cool. Awesome. <laughs> Excellent. Well, I, I, I'm sure I'm sure you'll be able to get it done. I mean, I'm sure things will will return to normal. I mean, people are already starting to do things like that again and, and playing concerts and whatnot. So, great, excellent. So, Lou, um, talk a little bit stylistically about this piece and and where it comes from and and uh, your music in general and and how this fits in. Well, that's. Uh kind of complicated to talk about yourself, uh, but uh, I guess I will. <laughs> I'm going to ask Alexander the same question to describe it and see how, see how the two match up. <laughs> so uh, the piece, uh, it, it went through, in my mind, it went through some changes because I, I didn't have the summer movement as, uh, as light and mostly happy uh, as I wanted when I, when I first wrote it. Um, and, uh, what happened was I, I ended up with a, a nice little melody that, that, uh, that I put at the very beginning. And then that melody reoccurs throughout the, the entire three movements in different ways. So uh, stylistically, I don't know what you would call uh, me, uh, or this piece or Alexandra's playing. Uh, she, uh, loves, contemporary music because uh, she says, uh, well, I'll, you should say it, Alexander, but it makes her feel more free and more emotionally connected. It gives her abilities to, or gives her opportunities with her abilities to do things that you don't when you're playing, you know, sonata form or Bach partitas, uh, you know, all absolute due respect to those pieces of music. But of course, you know, I guess, I live now, and I don't want to just copy everything that uh, that I learned in in graduate school and in undergraduate music school. Um, so I just do what I feel like doing. If it flows nicely, if it if it's catchy when it's supposed to be catchy, if it's uh, emotional or rich or grabs your heart someplace, that's what I'll do. And I'm not thinking, oh well, I want to put this theme here. And I want to bring this back. I mean, I will do that, but it only happens when it happens because that's how I feel like it's going to happen. That's right. the beauty of whatever we feel we can do. Yeah. So stylistically, you know, I've had this discussion many times. I tell people I'm not a classical guitarist. I don't play classical music. Classical music would be like if I were playing, you know, Fernando Soares uh, variations on the theme of Mozart, which I, yeah. I did in my prior lifetimes. 
And, uh, <laughs> but then my friends say, oh, yeah, but to most people, you're a classical guitar. What else would you be? And I don't right. know if you would call it uh, kind of crossover. It's, I mean, I, I love classical uh, style, and that's what I, I think I play. But my music is not necessarily classical. Although most, sure. most people would say that, you know, like guitar. But your, your training is, I mean, you, you, yeah. your, your mind is informed by those kinds of, of things. So, and I think, you know, for me, and, and similar to what you were saying, um, and we'll, we'll, we'll ask Alexander about this too, but, um, you know, I think one of the things that's interesting about being in the modern world and being a classical musician and composer in the modern world is, you know, you can draw from whatever sources of, of influence yes. you'd like, you know, and, and even if the piece that you're writing today is completely different from the piece that you wrote yesterday. And, and, you know, I, th I think some composers really embrace that. I think other composers try to define their style in, in specific ways. And it's just an interesting process. And I think there's something about the days that, that we live in now that make that possible, maybe in a way that, that, uh, you know, hasn't always been that way. You know, and I think, I think if you look at, especially, you know, during, the latter half of, uh, or the first half of the 20th century, and, and these these ideas about they're very rigid ideas about how composers need to operate, and the control that the academic environment had on on some of that, um, you know, must be must be pretty liberating these days to to be able to just hey, you know, I'm I know what I'm doing, and I'm going to write this because I feel like it and you know um, and, and from a or from a performer's point of view to be able to say well I want to I want to swim in those waters too I want you know I, I want to get in there and, and, and do that so um, so Alexander talk talk a little bit about um, about your your relationship with with contemporary music and why you have an affinity for it and how how that all influenced the uh, the work that you did on the, the solstice project here yeah, so um, I remember I like contemporary music or modern music from from my first piece in this style. It was Alejo de la Danza by Brauer, and I remember ah, that it was it was something very strange in my life during this time when I played this because it was completely something I didn't know what all those notes why they are sounding like this. What is so wrong with them? But then when I practiced it a bit more and more, I started to understand why. Why it's like this? <laughs> and I found that uh, you can be more free. You can uh, show yourself better in those notes that it's not very strict. It's um, it needs something more than just playing the notes. And I like this attitude. For that, I, I really like Rodrigo's music. Um, for me, uh, Invocation Dance is the best um, classical piece written for the classical guitar. And uh, it has a lot of... Um, magic moments in this piece it's not only playing the notes and for that i found uh, something uh, what is in interesting for me in those pieces that you can show yourself and you can use your emotions in in, in the better way i think uh, sometimes i find it difficult to um, find this uh, those emotions in sort of music let's say not always depends of course on the piece but um, it's uh, the matter of uh, harmony, probably, that it's more complicated in the modern, more modern, modern music. So uh, it has more colors, I think. Though I really like the song, so I like sure. to play his pieces. And I really like this music. But uh, if I have, um, if I sh have to choose something between um, periods, uh, um, different periods of uh, of music, I would go more on the modern uh, way. And solstice for me, I like the most second part, and for me it's uh, it's a really magic um, part because it's a bit there is a mystery, <laughs> and I like this mystery. <laughs> yes. And did you did you find that um, when when Lou sent you the music for for this piece, did, is is it something that you found that? It was easy for you to understand where he was coming from and you like the language of the music and, and did you feel an instant connection with it or it was it something that you had to, to really think about and ask about and, and mm -hmm. work on that way? Uh, well, my second part, I think I, I felt it from the beginning. It was something yeah. that is uh, close to me. Uh, with second part, I was so excited that I got this piece that I was super happy about every note. <laughs> 
And with winter, we had a bit more uh, work because maybe it was the shortest time I spent on this part. And I needed to practice it more and more um, to catch this connection between it. But at the end, I, I love all this piece, all three parts. Very, very cool. And are, are there are there plans afoot for any further collaboration? Are you going to write some more music for her, Lou? We haven't talked about it because we're so excited to just have that. <laughs> well, what have I done? Yeah. <laughs> we, we did this uh, together with the help of uh, other people and a lot of creativity. And I think one of the things that we, we managed to accomplish was that we banned the rigidity uh, that you mentioned, Carl, yes. of, uh, you know, s sticking with a, a certain form, a certain style, a certain feeling. We have varied feelings. We have different uh, styles that are melded together that come together really nicely in the piece, in my opinion. And uh, that's largely due to Alexandra's uh, performance of it. And I understand why she said that she, her favorite, she told me just flat out, my favorite movement is the second movement. And that she said right away, I think even before I'd finished the third movement. And I thought, well, I know what, I know what she likes. And I tried to uh, work some of that in, but the second movement is just, I don't know, I should let other people describe it. I, I knew why she liked it. It, it has lots of, uh, it has dissonances in it, but the dissonances tie in with a melodic theme and, um, and they go to uh, chordal, uh, I won't say chordal structures, but they go to chords that are absolutely uh, unrelated, but, but it fits. Uh, then that's what I knew why she liked it. I would have written the whole piece like that, but I thought we needed to have, you know, a nice little da 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 <laughs> at the beginning to talk about summer. <laughs> <laughs> and then in the third movement, we get into a little bit of rascados, you know, we uh, and and we have harmonic uh, diversions there too, although it's supposed to just be very descriptive of the uh, of the winters we come out of the shadows of the north and we go into winter and we have the wind going through uh, mountains across the oceans and through the trees through the limbs that, uh, of trees and right to our ears so that starts out with the wind i don't want to give it all the way you should listen you should look at uh, alexandra's video and uh, that, that would be my advice to people, and I really appreciate the opportunity that you took to have us here on your Armenia show, Carl. Yeah, absolutely. And what, what's what's coming up on in the future for both of you? What do you what's, what's do you have anything coming up um, in coming months okay, over the next year? With are there are there other projects on the plate? <laughs> uh, okay, so I'm going to prepare um, some good uh, guitar repertoire and to try to get a scholarship to study abroad. And this is my main goal for now. So on where, my where do, where would you like to study? Uh, I was thinking about the states. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So we try. We have a scholarship which uh, makes it really possible if you want to study uh, in the states. But the problem is that there is only few people can get it. So I have to prepare very well for it. But I will try. And are, are, which which programs are you looking at here? Oh, it's uh, Fulbright scholarship. Okay. And and mm -hmm. which 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 uh, which conservatories in the in the states are you looking at? Oh, I can choose. I can choose few a few of them. Uh, I have some ideas, but you know, this is just the um, beginning of all this thing. I maybe you don't, you don't want to give it away yet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's that's be, that's great. That's that that's very cool. So I, I, I hope that works out. I hope, I hope you're able to come here and study. So it's fantastic. Yeah, it would be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Lou? Do you have anything coming up that uh, that people should know about? Well, I have. I, I just 
I say I just finished because I'm about a year behind on everything, it seems like. <laughs> well, uh, we did lose a year there. <laughs> <laughs> I find myself well, I talk, to... talking to people about things that happened in 2019, you know, and saying, oh, yes, last year. And, and they say, no, that was two years ago. It's like that, that whole, <laughs> right. the whole year of 2020 just evaporated. So. Well, I have uh, two recordings. One is uh, the Book of uh, Renaissance. Uh, and I, I named it somewhat capriciously. The title of the CD is The uh, Book of Renaissance According to the Guitar of, of Lou Johnson. And then I have another one, uh, The Book of Baroque, which uh, is the Book of Baroque According to the uh, Guitar of Lou Johnson. And uh, let's see, I have a, uh, I transcribed in a prior lifetime, and then I recorded uh, Corelli's uh, La Folia, which is about, I don't know, 13, 14 minute piece from uh, violin and continual or, you know, or harpsichord or, or uh, cello or viol, whatever they used. Um, and that's going to be on, it's going to be on a uh, radio program, uh, FM radio program that gets podcast around the world sometime here next month so i'm meeting with him he wants to use my the folia as a centerpiece because the guitar is so sounds according to him so attractive to it and i agree with that uh, and then uh let's see i have another uh recording a cd that i'm uh i'm calling uh vibrant latin colors and so i'm going back through uh, some of my recordings and remastering them. And then I'm adding some things. And then just the other day, I thought, well, I should probably put, uh, I can't have a uh, Colores Latinos Vibrantes CD without Leo Brower on it. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to record a Leo Brower piece. Um, not one of, uh, Leo Brower is not known for being melodic, sweet, and lovely. Uh, but I, it, I don't know. There's some stuff in there. Yeah, There's, yeah. Uh, you know, the, the, the 18th etude is, is, is one of my favorites, and I think it's quite lyrical and lovely and beautiful and fantastic. And then you got the, the third movement of the Decameron Negro. Come on, that's, that's very melodic. <laughs> well, yes, you're, you're absolutely correct, Matt. And then there's uh, Dia de uh, Un Dia de Noviembre. So that's that's probably the one I'll put on there. And then I, I wrote a short suite that I dedicated to Brower, so I'll probably put that on there. And then I'm trying to decide, maybe you can help me. Should I put Romanza on there? How can you have absolutely the Latin, <laughs> vibrant Latin colors without Romanza? I always thought that was a Polish uh, folk tune. Maybe. Nobody knows. There's so there's so much about that piece that's up for for grabs, you know. Uh, they say Narciso Yepes copyrighted it. Or they say uh, uh, Guillermo. Uh, oh, jeez, uh, Gomez did it. Right. Uh, lots yeah. of people claim it. it. It's amazing to me that that piece can exist and nobody knows anything about it. it it's it's it, it's unbelievable. Like my piece. <laughs> <laughs> Just like my CDs. <laughs> Carl, you are fun. <laughs> You're fun. Well, thank you so much. <laughs> you guys, it's it's been great to talk to you. Um, anything else we should we should mention about the project or anything else you have going on that, that people should know oh, about? I'm playing a concert uh, next Sunday with a composer's uh, Composers Cooperative. They have four classical or three classical composers and then me, uh, mostly violin, uh, and, uh, piano, and voice, and harp. And uh, they're uh, putting on a concert where I will play Solstice. Uh, yeah, oh. so this will be uh, maybe, I don't know, other than the beautiful video that uh, where Alexandra plays it uh, might be the first public performance of it. But I'm hoping that she will oh. play it when, you know, when she gets an opportunity, when things start happening again. I mean, we had, she had, a, uh, Alexandra told me that she had some concerts set up in the UK, but then COVID came along. And then I had some opportunities in Greece. And I said, well, maybe better that you have Alexandra. She's closer. <laughs> and, <laughs> but anyway, when I play this piece for the composers, uh, cooperative, um, I think it'll be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to it. But I must also say that 
I will always view Alexandra's video performance as the the standard. I mean, anyone who plays it's going to they're going to have a high bar to meet to match up with how she performs. And a great reference to use to to learn and and say this is this is the the uh, the premier performance. This is the one that we we should all aspire towards, right? <laughs> And I will talk about her, too, since it's dedicated to her. Is it anything else that we should we should mention, Alessandra? Do you have anything else that you'd like to say? <laughs> 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 well, I really I really appreciate you being here and, and giving giving us your time. And, and uh, the, the, the videos are wonderful and the piece is wonderful and your playing is wonderful and Blue, your writing is wonderful. And I wish you all of the, the best of luck with the with the project and everything else going around with it i'm hoping that uh things are going to return to somewhat normal soon so that uh you know we can get this out there and you can play it live in front of audiences and all that kind of thing so it's, it's been really great so and again um alexander sapok that's s-a-p-o-k and lou johnson you can find them on youtube and lou has a, a website and alexandra i'm sure you have a website as, as well yes i have a website <laughs> we can we can google the, the heck out of this stuff and and get all over the internet and and find these things and of course i'll i'll include links in the uh in the in the podcast listing for for this stuff so um but i do appreciate it and it was a real joy talking to you and thank you for being my first like double guest experience and my first like multinational experience at the same time i think it's, it's really fantastic what we're able to do these days and and uh, i appreciate it best of luck to you both thank you very much that's very nice Alf. thank you very much and uh, thank you for bringing uh, alexandra and uh, myself together here today a big uh, bro bump to you man and a virtual hug to you alexandra lou was so kind to make available alexandra's recording of solstice for us to listen to and here is the solstice project Thank you. 
This is Carl Wolwind of Columbus Classical Guitar. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of the Guitar on My Knee podcast. For more information and past episodes, please visit columbusclassicalguitar.com or Carl Wolwind Guitarist on Facebook.